Hi, Eric Giboy, EricGiboy.com, and today, thanks to Photostrada.com, I'm going to show you, present you the Ricoh GR3. Let's start. As you can see, this is a really small compact camera, but uh, the big difference uh, between this uh, compact camera and other compact camera is that it has a large sensor. What do I mean by large sensor? It has uh, an APS-C sensor, 24.4 megapixels. So that's really a big difference uh, with many uh, compact cameras. So this is like a top of the range compact camera. This is a pro uh, version as some people say. I'm going to tell you the features of this camera and also my impression, what I think of it, what I like, what I don't like. So let's carry on. So the good thing about having a large sensor compared to your telephone or compared to a, a cheaper uh, compact camera is that uh, the dynamic range is better, uh, ISO, ISO is normally better, uh, you get better depth of uh, colors, color depth, actually it has a 14 bits color depth, a better image quality. Looking at the ISO, it goes from 100 ISO up to 102,400 ISO. So, when you listen to that, you feel like, wow, this is the camera I can bring anywhere with any light and this is perfect. Well, wait a second. I'll show you some pictures I've made. I started on 800 ISO because I assumed that below it was okay. And I went up to 102,400 ISO. And I think the results are really disappointing. I mean, up to 3,200, nothing to say. Quality is there, no problem. 6400, some works need to be done to uh, reduce a bit the noise. 12,000, 25,000, 51,000, 102,000, this is unusable. Uh, you look at 50,000 or 25,000, it looks like a pizza already. So 100,000, this is uh, really stupid. To, to, to Why do they sell us such high ISO if the result is not there? Tell me it's good up to 6400 and that's it and forget about the rest and uh, but but don't put so high high so if after it's not usable so I prefer you to work on other things in the camera than to give me some high so I cannot use anyway so really honestly up to 3200 perfect 6400 limits over that unusable it has Autofocus uh, with uh, face detection and contrast detection and also face uh, detect. Uh, it works really well. I think uh, it worked really fast. It was really good. And I would say that uh, when I use in macro mode, because it has macro too, uh, I had a bit, it was a bit more difficult to focus, but maybe I didn't use it properly because it's uh, from six to 12 centimeters. And maybe I was a bit out of range sometime, not sure. So uh, it was a bit harder for me to focus in uh, macro. But for the rest, I think it worked perfectly, no problem. It has image stabilization, four stops in three axes. Uh, I think small compact camera anyway without stabilization as there is no a mirror in there. Uh, it's already quite stable. So even with that, it works already quite well. But this one on three axes, you do get four stops. So I think it's good. I think. The result was quite impressive. It works really fine. I like it. By the way, as you can hear, uh, when the camera is switched off, you hear the stabilization, the stabil stabilizer and that, that is moving. So your camera is not broken. It's just the way it is. Okay, so don't worry if you hear that noise. The screen is touchable. Uh, you can use it to select the, the focus point or also you can actually select focus point and make the picture at the same time. That works really fine. That's okay, nice uh, screen, nice to have this. The lens has an included cover, as you can see, it comes out. It's uh, on 18.3 millimeter, that opened at 2.8 up to f16. And uh, 18.3 in APS-C is the equivalent of uh, 28 millimeters on full frame. This is a fixed focal length and I think this is the wrong focal length. Uh, 28 millimeters, many people do street photography like 20, uh, 28 or 35, some prefer 24, but normally they change lens or they have a project and if they change project, they change lens, it all depends. But I think 28 is sometimes too wide for uh, street, street photography with people in there. 
but sometimes it's really too narrow if there's a building. So I don't like that lens. I would prefer to have a zoom lens that would be from 24 up to 50 or 70. Obviously, it would be a different camera, different concept, something really different. But for what I use, I would prefer, even if you don't go up to 70, I would prefer 24 up to 50 millimeter. Okay. And then 2.8, it sounds luminous, but for being a fixed the prime focal length i think it's not that luminous i think i would expect 2.0 or 1.8 or 1.4 although it would be larger lens but i think uh 2.0 would be a bare minimum i think 2.8 is not luminous enough honestly video it does video actually they've put they were clever they put a small uh, button here so if you're in, uh, you're in photography mode you just click on this button and switch to uh, video automatically and it does 60 13 24 p it doesn't have the 25 and 50p uh, that PAL system used in Europe and some other countries. That's a bit surprising. I don't think this camera is made for video. Maybe you get a small clip, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, one minute, but you're not really planning to make, se make serious video with that kind of camera anyway. And the maximum recording time, uh, continuous recording time is 25 minutes. So obviously this is not really thought for video but it has it so if you're traveling and you want to make a short clip you can by the way i'm going back to the lens there's a small ring here you can take it out i think it takes out too easily i think um, it may get loose quite soon i think it could be it should be stiffer if you take it out, take it out you'll see there's some contact here because you can actually put some accessories on the lens. I didn't find any accessories, really. I could not uh, in investigate on that. If you're interested in that camera, I advise you, you search a bit. I think there is a larger, uh, some kind of, of uh, lens you can put over it, or you can uh, also uh, a shade. So I've not tried it, but this is there. I think it gets out, it's too loose, honestly. There is something really surprising in this camera. Uh, I'm happy it's there, but I think it's surprising. I understand that a compact camera with a prime lens should be really protected against dust. Sounds logical to me. Well, there is a dust cleaning system on the sensor. Why? Because it seems that people with the former version, uh, that problem with dust getting to the camera, they needed to get it fixed at the, by a technician. So it's probably why they've put uh, dust cleaning and also uh, probably they use the stabilization that use uh, sometimes, I don't know, it's, it's clean, but I know that in Olympus, for example, it vibrates the same way uh, using the stabilization for cleaning, you know, via vibration and ultrasonic, so probably a similar system. But it's surprising, that it needs to have a dust cleaning when it's supposed not to get any dust in there, okay? Some people are gonna think I'm stupid, but uh, it says there is a digital zoom that does 35 and 50 millimeter, I've looked all the menus, all the buttons, I read all the manual, I cannot find, I cannot find anything about digital zoom that says there is 35 and 50 millimeter. I cannot find anything. So I don't know what this is. Uh, maybe I could not find it, it is there. I didn't read properly, that's possible, but I could not find anything about that. So for me, it's just a prime 28 millimeter lens. Maybe what's possible is true that you can actually uh, make a close-up of your screen and it's uh, four time and 16 time. So but it's probably more to see uh, the place and then capture. I'm not sure. I made the picture. It was still coming out in 28 millimeter, although I previewed in a close-up, you know, so I don't know. Maybe this is the part because this camera has a great part that lets you edit your uh, your raw files. You can actually uh, recut, reframe, crop, whatever, and uh, then export them to JPEG. You can actually do it in the camera. So maybe this is in that part where you can actually uh, crop and uh, it's like doing a 30, uh, 35 or 50 millimeter. I'm not sure. Anyway, it says it's it would be digital so it would not be the same quality as optical obviously but i could not find it some people you may think i'm stupid but I, I prefer to say it i could not find that feature if you find anyone who's spoken about it well see what they say if the quality is there or not but i could not find it it does macro i'll show you a pizza and some olives it works okay it, do, it does macro i cannot say different there is no new viewfinder but you can actually remove this small uh, cover of the uh, of the flash hot shoe and there is an optional viewfinder, electronic viewfinder you can put in there. I've not tried it, I've not tried it because I didn't get it. 
And, uh, but this way you can actually uh, frame it using the viewfinder. It's optional, I don't know how much it costs, but it exists. As I am speaking about the hot shoe, there is no integrated flash. Uh, you must use a, an external flash unit if you want to light. Uh, the only thing is that uh, actually there is, they could have given a small, very small flash as accessory flash that like Olympus and I think Panasonic does or Fuji, I think Fujifilm does it too. Put a small flash in there or even have a really a small LED light, the same as we have on telephone, because even if the light is no good, it may help to trigger a slave, a, a larger flash in slave mode or whatever. And, or maybe in macro, uh, put some lighting in there. I think it's a pity there is not a really small flash or uh, an included accessory as a flash. By speaking about flash, I speak about the uh, shutter. The shutter is actually in the lens. It's, it's not a focal plane shutter. This is a central uh, uh, leaf shutter. It means you can actually synchronize your flash at any speed. This camera goes from uh, four thousandth of a second up to 30 seconds plus bulb mode so as long as you press the button picture is still being made or can you actually use your mobile phone to do it as uh, it has wi-fi and uh, an app and uh, bluetooth and you have an app on your mobile you can actually do it do it but i think this is great to have uh, this uh yeah that you can actually synchronize at any speed uh, if you want to make uh, the ambient light really dark and uh, just uh, light uh, your subject whether an object or person you can really do it because uh, four thousandth of a second without uh, high synchro is great. Uh, honestly, it open many flash possibilities. Although the, I don't think this is the idea of that kind of camera, but it is there, and I think not every camera lets you do that. And this is a good point to set. There is an included ND filter that will uh, allow you to cut light. Uh, you can put it automatic or put it uh, force it or take it out or switch it off, uh, it actually uh, cut the light. If you're in automatic, the camera will decide on its own if uh, the ND filter needs to be activated or not. There is also an AA filter simulation like anti-aliasing to uh, avoid more array, so it's included also. Memory, it uses uh, SD, an SD memory card, but it has also an internal 2 gigabyte uh, memory. I think this is great because uh, if, you're not, if you run out of memory uh, on your card, you can still make some picture in, in the camera. So if you're traveling, whatever, and you know, oh, my card is full, you can still make some picture. Two gigabyte gives some space. So, so I think this is really a good point. The battery. The battery life is shameful. 200 pictures or 180 minutes of video. And I think, I think this is ridiculous. If you're going on the street and uh, make uh, you're traveling, 200 pictures is really short. Uh, I know that some people make 30 pictures in one day, but many people make closer to 400 uh, traveling. Although half of them, they will, get, they will have to throw them in the bin because they don't like them. But sometimes you're there and you don't have time to, you cannot recharge your camera for a few days or whatever. 200 is really too little. I, I, I don't understand how they can uh, deliver a camera in that price range that supports quality with so um, few pictures 200 is ridiculous it does time lapse and also you can do some bracketing so you want bracket exposure things like this it is also possible it weighs 227 grams it's really, it's really light um, easy so it's okay it's, mm, it's okay it's nice it has wi-fi and bluetooth so for connectivity it works perfectly and uh, what I said before, I really like the part uh, that lets you edit your raw file directly in the camera. I prefer to do it in a computer, but if you're traveling and you don't want to do JPEG to be able to upload them directly to your Facebook or send to a newspaper, whatever, you still want to work in raw, but you don't want to carry your computer with you. This is good to be able to do some editing and uh, uh, develop your raw file and uh, crop it, change it, do a few things on it, and I've get it ready from the camera. So then you throw it directly to your phone and you can upload it. So I think this is a really nice feature in this camera. So what did I like about this camera? I really like the autofocus. It works really well, really nice. I like the fact that there is stabilization, image stabilization. I think it's a plus. It's really silent. If I switch it on, I put close to the microphone. This is really silent. You can even reduce more the sound of the camera itself. So, so I think it's really good. If you make a concert picture in a church or whatever, this is a good point. The image quality is really there. I think it's nice. 
quality is, is there, it's good. I like some features like the small button to switch on video and things like this. The menus are really easy to use. You can even uh, keep some, uh, you can make some profile, personal profiles, and uh, you don't have to go to menu again, and then you actually keep them in there. Put a small lock on the, uh, this wheel so you don't accidentally move it, but you can have manual, uh, time, um, time priority, well, speed priority, aperture priority, P mode, and then U1, U2, U3, where you actually keep your uh, favorite profiles. So this, this is good, uh, I like this. And it's also easy to use, a function button that works really well, the, the access to the menus. I think it's easy to use, honestly. So what I didn't like, well, first the battery. The battery, as I said before, this is shameful. 200 photos is ridiculous. Second, the lack of flash, I think it's a big mistake. Even if, if we would put a small LED flash, the same as we have on telephone, that would be good. Even if you almost never use it, but the minute you need something, you've got there. So I think that, it is, that would be good to have it. And one thing that really worries me is that when you switch on the camera, you make picture like 10 minutes, I don't know, I'm not going to make pictures now, but for 10 minutes and all these parts where the battery is gets really hot. And uh, I don't think this is normal. If, would be, if I would be like uh, shooting the whole day or making movie, well, maybe, yeah, okay. But I, I, honestly, after 20 pictures, you, you notice that it's about a lot hotter than the rest of the camera. So I don't think this is really normal. Uh, I don't know if this is this unit or, or every unit, but this is quite surprising. I, actually, yesterday I was making the pictures and my, my hand became sweaty because of the heat, you know? And I think this is really, that, that's something to worry about. I don't like, when there is electronics and I start uh, heating up, uh, you worry about how it's going to get older this camera like uh, two years time electric doesn't like to have a hit so uh it normally uh, shorten its life so that worries me quite a bit so would i buy this camera well honestly i think this is a niche camera that is really specialized in uh, street photography uh, not even really low light because the iso are not getting that up and the lens is not that luminous so I think this is a great daytime uh, or after, late afternoon or early morning camera for street photography. But honestly, this is only for the person who likes to do street photography with a 28 millimeter lens. If you like 35, forget about it. If you like 20, if you like 24, forget about it. If you like to be able to change, forget about it. So I think this is camera is really too limited, at least for me, for the kind of picture I make. This is really too limited. And uh, if it was not for the size of the sensor, there's no difference with making picture with my iPhone. Honestly, I don't want to offend anyone, but while I'm using my iPhone or any telephone, you have a larger screen, you can make picture easy, easy the same way. They have some third apps, uh, third party apps that let you make many things like that lets you do it, like time lapse, things like this. You can actually do that with your telephone. So honestly, uh, in my case, I would never buy a camera like this. Not this one, any kind of camera like this. Why? Because I've got it with my telephone. My telephone, I can even put some external lenses like uh, Sandmark lenses or Moment lenses. You can actually put it on your telephone and you have more options than this. So I don't see the point of that kind of cameras except if you actually need a better image quality. This is for me the only reason because it's a lot more limited than a telephone or many other compact cameras. There is the Sony RX7, uh, I can't remember. It's different, but yeah, some, some kind of zoom and there is some Canon compact camera. And so we'll have to look at the sensor size also, but honestly, if it was not for the sensor size, this is nonsense to buy this camera. If what you are looking for is a 28 millimeter uh, lens, uh, on an APS-C sensor in a compact size, this is your camera. If you look for anything else, <laughs> forget about this. Uh, it's, it's more, I think that if you're interested in that kind of camera, you should go out with any APS-C camera or equivalent, put it on 28 millimeters equivalent, stick it with a, a piece of gaffer tape and spend the day on 28 millimeters. And then you will know if 28 millimeters is your focal length for that, that or not. 
do that test because you're likely to buy this camera and then see it's not the focal length you need and you will have lost your money. So honestly, do that test. If you're not a 28 millimeter person, test it this way on you, the camera you already have, go around, lock your lens on 28 millimeters equivalent full frame and try it. Well, that's my conclusion. I hope you like this video. If you think it may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done yet, uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a small button down here and a small bell. If you click on it, you will receive a notification when I upload a new video. My website, erichibo.com. If you have any question, you can, you can leave a comment below or send me a message to info at erichibo.com. Below, I also put links of my gear on Amazon and also links to other parts of my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Bye.